Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Locked On Flames. Sonny Milano has finally found his way to Calgary on a PTO, that is. The summer of Brad rolls on as the season gets closer and closer. Let's talk all about the latest edition today on Locked On Flames. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Locked On Flames, or welcome to Locked On Flames. If you're new here, hello. Hi, my name is Jess Omosto, and thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. If you're new, make sure you're subscribed, you're liking the shows, and if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, like, hit that notification bell, and make sure you turn notifications to all and not personalized. But Flames fans, we can finally... Breathe a little bit. I think that this is um, another step in the right direction for Brad Tree Living and the identity of the Flames as uh, they've needed to add another player here. And Brad Tree Living listened. Sonny Milano is coming to camp on a PTO, and that could mean great things for him, but also the Flames. Sonny Milano has been... One of the, I don't want to say one of the top names in free agency, but definitely a guy that, you know, you would want on your team. And why was he on the market for so long? You know, there's always that cause for concern or a little bit of like a red flag when someone who is capable of producing at an NHL level stays unsigned. But I think it comes back to his concussion history. He's 26 years old was drafted uh, 16th overall back in 2014 by the Columbus Blue Jackets and played for Anaheim for quite some bit where he finally got his footing underneath him. And his stats last year, uh, last year was really his, was it last? Yes, last year he had 14 goals, 20 assists in 66 games. So when you look at it, you really have to see that this guy has just unfortunately been struck with concussions and health issues that have prevented him from playing full seasons and have unfortunately uh, caused a sporadic start to his career. And, you know, I, I don't think that you should write someone off when that happens. You know, you look at Andre Kasha, another Anaheim player. Um, who was traded to Boston in the, was that the David Backus trade or was that the Dan Heinen trade? Regardless, it was part of that deadline, that trade deadline. And he ended up getting a really bad concussion. And then I don't believe he played a single game the following season. No, he played one, one shift, one or two shifts. And then he ended up leaving the ice and it was late in the season it was right before the playoffs started and the kid was like 24 at the time and the Bruins didn't take a chance on him again and he went up to Toronto in free agency and broke out he had a stellar stellar season uh when offensively and it was a nice bounce back for him and he just signed a contract in North uh, in North Carolina with the Carolina Hurricanes. And, you know, you want to see something like that for anyone, but especially a guy like Sonny Milano, who, when he is healthy, he can score. And I've talked to JD um, from Locked On Ducks, and he's going to come on at some point this week to talk about Milano. But it's just so frustrating to watch a player who has so much potential, keep falling into these missteps. Missteps, I say, with quotes, because it's not their fault. These are just roadblocks. And the same thing with Nolan Patrick, who is rumored to not even play again this season because of his concussions and because of his migraines. And this is just a part of the sport and life that is so frustrating. Um, If you've ever had a concussion, you know how hard it is to kind of heal and recover from it as just like an everyday person 
let alone when you're trying to go back out there and play a physical game. I've had a few concussions and they're not fun. And it only gets worse with um, the more you have. And your brain is a very, very important organ. And, you know, you need to protect that. And I think that Sonny Milano, um, you want to see him be able to move past this start to his career. And hopefully he's not going to have serious long-term ramifications due to his concussion history. You know, that is obviously obviously something to worry about here, but you want to see this guy. And sending him to a PTO is a long as a low risk, high reward situation. And those are the things that you need to optimize on when you are looking for, you know, an additional scorer or somebody who can come in and at a low, low dollar like uh, they just resign or they're working to resign Brett Ritchie. And you think about, you know, you sign for 800,000, 750, whatever, and he can go out there and still make big hits. He, he might not be um, the strongest producer, but he's going to go out there and throw hits and maybe cause a turnover. You never know. And I think that that is again, one of those situations you have to look at and be grateful for. Um, you know, you have to make the best of every situation. And I think that Sonny Milano coming in on a PTO is fantastic. I think that that is, again, the first start to him bouncing back. And that's just, that's the start of all of this. And this season is only growing closer and closer. So we can, we can only imagine what this roster is going to look like in two weeks from now. But Coming up next, we are going to talk more about where Milano fits in in this lineup. We have to talk about that. And, you know, is there still room for some of these guys in uh, on the Wranglers to break through the roster? What do we have? But before we do that, let's take a quick break to talk about our friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all of your latest find all of the latest football league developments, game matchups, news and podcasts including this year's uh, playoffs down the road, you know. Joe Shiesty did not have a good weekend, but you know who did? Cooper Rush. Who would have thought? Bet online is also your continued source for your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, including MLB. Is Aaron Judge going to hit 60? Is Pool Host going to hit 700? And of course, boxing and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device and learn more about the trends and actions. Bet online, where the game starts. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Locked on Flames. We are back to daily programming. To me, that tells me that hockey is closer than ever until opening night, of course. And I'm so happy to be here. And I'm so happy to have you join me. So I think we were all in agreement that the roster had some holes, that um, some AHL guys could come up and Fill, especially to start the season. I think that th- that that's always a good start. I don't think you're going to want to, you know, call up a guy in the middle of the season and expect them to jump into it. Um, I mean, obviously that happens, but I think it's better to do it this way versus uh, the second way because you don't have to worry about them – shaking up the momentum too much or uh, that player coming back and then you have to send them back down and you're stunting their development. So I feel like the bottom six is a little bit clogged. Even the, even the bottom nine could be a little bit clogged right now. And I don't think that the, that it's a possibility for uh, Jacob Pelletier to make the team. I don't think Matthew Phillips will make the team. Um, I don't know about Rizichka. I truly don't. And I think when you look at this lineup, you have the opportunity to 
build more and to fill the holes, but I don't think it's going to be with players who are in the AHL. I think you could potentially do it with a guy, you know, like a Sonny Milano, um, like a Brett Ritchie, but I still think that they could have gone after Kessel. I think that that should have been a thing. I don't know why they wouldn't do it, but here we are. And I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, the Right now, this is the projected lineup. This is from Eric Francis's um, latest article. And it's uh, Huberto, Lindholm, and Toffoli, which I think we've all kind of agreed upon as the line that will be rolling out opening night. Coleman, Kadri, and Mangiapane. I think that is, a, again, another great defensive and offensive production line. Uh, probably going to be one of the toughest <laughs> lines, I think, uh, physically as well. And then you have Milano, Backlund, and Dubé. Um, I don't hate it. I think that Dubé just really needs to come into his own again this season. I think that that would greatly benefit him. Uh, and then you have uh, Lucci, Rooney, and Lewis, which, in my opinion, I think you could have a guy like Rizicka come in and take over for Rooney or Lewis. And that's just going that like, that's just my opinion. Don't come for me, please. I think that that's just kind of a more realistic option here. And that could make your team even better. And then for your D pairings, you have Hannafin, Anderson, uh, Wegar, and Tanev and Zadorov and Shillington. To be quite honest with you, I forgot the team had re-signed Zadorov, but he's here. And I think that that's a good, uh, I like that. I like that Zadorov and Shillington are still playing or are going to be playing together because Shillington obviously was one of the best defensemen in the playoffs last season. And I think that Zadorov and him could, will make a great pair. Um, Eric Goodbranson leaving is what it is. I don't think that the Flames were ever going to offer him $4 million. I think that that is a complete overpayment. But uh, Uyghur and Tanev are going to be an interesting pair as well. I think that uh, both are great defensemen, but Uyghur has the ability to be uh, the fighter. And Chris Tanev is one career fight in his uh and I just don't see him dropping the gloves with anyone, but we have seen Uyghur fight and he's fought Nola Chari, who was his former teammate, but this was also before they were teammates uh, twice. And I think that it's kind of a wake up call for him, but you know, I really like this top pairing and Hannafin and Anderson. I think that we may see Uyghur take over Hannafin's spot. I do. I think that, uh, that could easily be flip-flopped and not to any discredit for Hannafin. I just, I like the way that Hannafin and Tanev play together. I think that Uyghur deserves a shot at the top pairing, um, especially if it's going to slot him in on uh, special teams. I really like that. And obviously with your goaltending, you have Vladar or Mark Sherman Vladar, who are, um, you know, two great goaltenders that deserve a lot of credit. Again, I don't want to say it's too early to tell, but I just, I don't think that you're going to get. <sighs> no, I just, I feel like that right side is lacking. I don't like the way that it, it just, it's not strong enough. You know, you have to fully in Mangiapane and then it drops significantly to Dubé and Lewis. I I really want them to trade for someone, and I think that that's going to be made possible if they move a defenseman, and that is something that the media in Calgary keeps hinting about, which tells me that it is something, something is brewing, and that defenseman is more than likely going to be Huso Valimaki, and I, I, that's just the reality of it. And he is not someone that Sutter likes. Him and Sutter do not get along. And I don't know what transpired there. I just, and I also don't think that Valimaki is cut out for the Flames organization. I think that he would be great somewhere like Philly, that is a dumpster fire, or um, 
Chicago, maybe head north to Edmonton. I don't know. I'm just saying um, there something needs to get figured out there in order to strengthen that right side. I think that the left looks pretty decent. Um, you know, you have Huberto, Coleman, Milano, and Lucic, who, you know, that's three. And then you still have a guy who can be physical. The center looks great. I would chef's kiss the center depth a million times over. And if you told me that this is what the center's, uh, the center would look like back in May or June, I probably would have laughed in your face. But we need to figure out a way to strengthen up that right side. It just needs a little bit more tweaking, and then we will be there. We will be so much closer to being a true playoff contending team. Not that I don't think the Flames are contenders now, but I think they just, in order to keep that going and to keep that as a sustainable goal, they just need to do a little bit of tweaking. Unless Dylan Dubé is coming back and is transpiring into Superman. I don't know. Who knows? But coming up next, we're going to talk about the team. What does this mean for the team? What does another addition to this roster mean? What does it mean for their identity, their the roster, and shaking it up? Is shaking it up worth it? We have talked time and time again about this team and how much they have needed to tweak and find some secondary scoring. And if you look at that bottom six right now, you have Let's see. Sorry, I had the graphic pulled up, but let's see. You have um, Milano, Backlund, and Dubé. I think Milano and Backlund are going to be your uh, solid scorers there. Dubé, it's not that I don't like him. You guys know that I love Dylan Dubé. I think that he is a great guy. But I just I think that there's just something missing from his game, and I hope that he found it over the summer. Lucic, Rooney, and Lewis could also be a good line, or Lucic, Rooney, and Richie. Um, Brett Richie uh, had the same amount of playoff goals as Johnny Gaudreau, so that is absolutely something to think about. <laughs> um, but I think that Kevin Rooney could also put up a few. And Milan Lucic, if he finds his footing again in his final year, that would be great. I think that He will more than likely end up re-signing a one-year deal with the Flames uh, towards the end of this. Uh, I don't see him riding off into the sunset, but I definitely don't think he's going to be making more than what he is. Could they just bring, if nobody, I think somebody will pay him. If it's not the Flames, somebody absolutely will. And I can hear the Bruins fans getting more and more excited now, but Again, there, there's definitely opportunity for this team to kind of flip-flop. I think that you could put uh, Milano on that second line with Kadri and Mangiapane just to try it out. I think that's the cool thing about hockey is you can be experimental. Do I like when they do it in the middle of a game? No, that stresses me out. I think unless there is an absolute dire need for it, I think you roll with the consistency. But if you put Coleman, Backlund, and Dubé on the same line, you have Coleman who can score and be a little bit of a pest on top of Backlund, who is a good defensive player as well, and Dylan Dubé who could learn from them. I think that that would be great. Uh, I just I think that there, it's a no-brainer that Milano will make this team out of camp. I think that it they brought him in on a PTO because of the health reasons and the health concerns. But again, it's a low risk, high reward situation here. And the flames just, they have to do what's best for them. And especially with the cap situation in a flat cap era, you really, you got to figure it out. You don't want to be like the Toronto Maple Leafs and have $3 billion tied up in your top line. And then no one can figure out why They're not working in the playoffs, but I think that the Flames chemistry looks good. I think that, uh, you know, the team, almost all the team went to Banff over the weekend to golf. Uh, I know Lindholm was there. Uh, 
Eakin, Cody Eakin was there, who is also in on a PTO, Lindholm, Coleman. You know, it looked like a, a good chunk of the team was there. So it'll be nice to see kind of that identity come back. Daryl Sutter made a comment about how this team last year took a big step forward in finding their identity or making one, continuing to build one. And I just, I really do think that this is a special team, just like last year. However, I was reminded while watching the the rookie camp games that <laughs> last season fans overreacted. The Flames came out in preseason looking horrible. They looked slow. They looked like they had never skated before in their life. They just did not play well. But guess what? It's the preseason. Those games don't matter. And you don't get points. You don't get anything. You don't get a trophy for coming out undefeated or scoring the most goals. So I think that it's important to remember that those games are there to shake the dust off and kind of um, get back into shape and find your routine again so thank you everyone for listening to locked on flames as always i'm jess belmosto thank you so much for tuning in you can follow me on twitter at jess belmosto you can follow the show at lo underscore flames pod and if you're watching on youtube leave a comment i'll have a question of the day in there as well and remember we are back we are back to daily episodes, which is so fun. I'm so happy to be back and cannot wait to talk to you guys tomorrow. More about uh, some maybe who could make the team from the Wranglers to Calgary, or I guess they're still in Calgary anyways, but who can make the jump? Why I think the Flames are just smarter than the Oilers and of course, whatever other news comes our way. And I will see you then.